Hello, my name is Andy Hom. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Edinburgh, and I'd like to use this short video to tell you about my recently published article, Heidegger's Heritage, which is now available online first and will soon appear in a special issue of the Review of International Studies on Existentialism and International Relations. Few philosophical traditions have broken with conventions so gleefully or influenced modern thought and culture as widely as existentialism. Its philosophical tracts, novels and plays, its popular magazine articles, and the international celebrity of leading lights like Simone de Beauvoir, Jean-Paul Sartre, and Martin Heidegger all introduce readers to novel ideas about living freely, resolutely, and authentically in the face of intolerable and often perilous circumstances. Existentialism, not surprisingly, resonated with generations coming to grips with the Second World War, the shock of the Holocaust, the advent of, the, of atomic weapons, and later the Cold War's prolonged age of anxiety. Since then, existentialism has burrowed its way into nearly every corner of thought and culture in global life. In this sense, it marks one of the great intellectual success stories of our age and is showing up again and again in what has been termed our new age of anxiety. Strangely enough, though, IR has not yet grappled with existentialism as fully as other areas of the human sciences or modern letters. Our special issue hopes to change that. My contribution to the special issue is a close reading of the temporal politics of authenticity found in Heidegger's magnum opus, Being in Time, which first appeared during the 20 years crisis, as well as his later work, especially his recently published Ponderings, or The Black Notebooks, which comprise 10 volumes of personal and professional journals that show, among other things, that Heidegger held lifelong Nazi sympathies, which he viewed as consistent with his philosophical work. Now, the Heidegger affair has drawn much attention outside of IR, but my research suggests that the crux of the matter rests in an underappreciated aspect of his work, which is his theory of time. Heidegger's vision of authentic existence entails that human beings must continually confront and overcome social time by discovering and enacting the temporality of a distinctive subjectivity. He calls this authentic or primordial temporality. Heidegger then equates inauthentic, das man, or the they, uh, with numerous others with whom we must interact in society. He equates this with social time, or the tick, tick, tick of the modern clock. Das man and clock time surround das ein, the would-be authentic subject of existence, with homogeneous, indistinct, and alienating moments full of sameness, of idle or trivial concerns, and gossip and chatter. To distinguish itself ex existentially from Das Mann, then, which merely survives or persists, Dasein must discover its own distinctive potential. And to enact this, it must behave or it must act publicly in ways that forge a more holistic and unified temporality, linking its personal past with its concrete present to forge a more unique future. As I mentioned, Heidegger describes this as a primordial or even an ecstatic temporality. It is primordial because it unites past, present, and future in a single unity reminiscent of various creation myths and other accounts of the dawn of time. And it's ecstatic because uh, of the Greek word ecstasis, or standing outside or alongside. In other words, the unified temporality of authentic design sets it apart from the otherwise anonymizing and dispersed passage of the social clock time of Das Mann. One of the surest ways to realize ecstatic temporality over and against social time is through decisive committed action, especially that which distinguishes the resolute individual from the frivolous crowd. By loading up this vision of life with existential and even metaphysical, Remember that authentic temporality is more primordial than the social time of the modern clock. Uh, by loading this up with metaphysical meaning, Heidegger encourages not only overly individuated, but often aggressive habits of thought and action, which reject all possibilities of a coexistence. So while his existentialism purports to theorize human freedom, its fundamental temporal antagonism enabled and even encouraged Heidegger to embrace Nazism as he took over the rectorship of Freiburg University and to routinely ignore and sometimes commit acts of overt anti-Semitism. Heidegger also elevated Adolf Hitler as the singular icon of true German identity to the Freiburg uh, student body. Notably, he did all these things and more using the arch existentialist and often explicitly temporal language developed in being in time. 
Heidegger's Nazism is well covered in intellectual history, but what has so far escaped scrutiny is how some of these more aggressive themes and discourses originating in his existentialism resonate directly in today's right-wing rena renaissance. Not least the language of self-authenticity and committed decisive action as something which sets apart those who are real from those who are simply playing pretend. As I show throughout the last section of the article, perpetrators of contemporary outbursts of violence and hate often describe their actions and themselves in the Heideggerian jargon of a highly individualized, resolute, and decisive subject, whose singular mass, whose singular action, excuse me, creates a historic new time, escaping the inauthentic concerns and chatter of modern society, as well as the uncommitted opinions of those too afraid to act, and indeed forging a brighter and more committed future. The article provides what I hope is ample empirical evidence of this, or at least provocative evidence of this, from white power and its fetish for the tactical life to its iconography of so-called uh, quote-unquote lone wolf attacks as heroic, self-contained, and era-defining moments, which hold the potential to preserve authentic white culture and the quote, liberty of the folk against, again, quote, the blob. Whatever Heidegger might have said about today's white power and individual attackers, I argue that their own words make it quite clear that they understand themselves as acting within and throughout a heritage, sorry, and through a heritage that calls directly back to Heidegger's unique account of, of authentic existence as a struggle to forge an, an ecstatic temporality amidst the alienating social concerns of modern time. This has important implications for the politics and philosophy of time, for how we grapple with Heidegger's weighty legacy, and for understanding some of the most important security issues confronting democracies and international politics today. Heidegger's Heritage is available open access in the Review of International Studies, and I hope you'll enjoy reading it. Thanks very much.